Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. I want to rehash some of my old publications because when I look at them, I just couldn't view them. One problem I had at the time was the very quality of the sound or audio if you like. So these clips are now being revisited and what I want to do is to upgrade them and this is thanks to everyone who has donated. Any donations coming this way go into building this channel. The audio quality has now been improved and the next step is to upgrade other parts of the channel. So look out for these changes. Some are very small, but even those do take a lot of time and a lot of work. Now I'm looking at new software to make your experience more enjoyable. Today, I want to go back to what is probably been said to be the most difficult chess puzzle out there. But how many times do we get to see a really tough puzzle? Forget about looking at a problem where there is a mate in 250 moves or so because they are simply impossible to solve using our limited brain capacity. This puzzle is set to date back to 1987 in a tournament in Brussels. And this is a tournament we're talking about along with every single player who played, again, with the final standings. And look who was there among the big names and who did what. Kasparov, Karpov, Timon, Korchnoi, Tao, etc. The second SWIFT tournament, sponsored by SWIFT, the Society for Worldwide Interbanking Financial Telecoms, and this is where SWIFT comes from, is where this puzzle really originated from. I don't know how Jim Plaskett fits into the equation, but he was the one who came along to the tournament and circulated this puzzle. No one was able to solve it, with the exception of one person, and he's on the list that you just seen, Tao himself. It was said Tao looked at this puzzle for just about 10 to 12 minutes, couldn't solve it, and then left the venue. And on his return, he also had the solution with a correct answer. Something no one else was able to do. But forget about the Brussels tournament, and let's pay attention to this chess puzzle. And why many say it to be the most difficult of them all. And this is a puzzle. If you have seen it before, and I'm sure if you have been looking for such puzzles, you would have seen it somewhere because it still remains an outstanding problem. In total, we have three knights and two bishops, two opposite color bishops. And then we have one, two, three, four black pawns and two white pawns. White has a pawn that is about to promote. And the beauty of this puzzle is that with the right combo, white wins, believe it or not. Now, this is probably the most complex board position. And even though there are no queens or rooks present, this doesn't take anything away. And even with the only minor pieces on the board, let's see how it all ends. If you want to pause, you can pause now or wait until I explain a few things. And then you can stop the clip for as long as you like. Okay, this is what we have here. The first thing that comes to mind is to find a way to get this pawn to reach promotion. But if you transgender into a queen, this knight fork follows and you get nowhere. And I wonder how different engines would do here. The latest version of Stockfish, and I'm talking about version 10, evaluates this position as minus 1.63 at the depth of 29 and cannot find the correct answer unless you help the engine with this first couple of moves. And it's strange because if you let the engine evaluate deeper and longer at depth 29, it's still looking at a minus 0.163 at level 30, minus 0.173 at level 33, or depth 33 if you like, minus 1.75. So there's no way the engine can see a win, and its evaluation leads to a loss. 
So again, that depth 30 stock fish shows an increase in the evil to minus 1.73. But what I do know, there are other engines, much older engines that are able to find the answer to this puzzle. But let's put these engines to rest for now. And this problem with the engines has to be a topic for discussion some other time. The most important move here is the very first one. And if you're able to find it, at least you will be on the right track. If you want to take some time to think about it, now would be a good time to pause. So pause now and think it over for as long as you like. Okay, we are back. Now hope you have something. The first move, in fact, is the very move we excluded. If anyone wants to promote, it makes perfect sense to promote to a knight because at least your promotion is safe as the knight cannot come in with a fork. Komodo 12.1 is as useless when it comes to solving this puzzle because it gives you a very similar picture to that of stockfish. What do you think Houdini says here? The same old stuff. So let's forget what the engines say, and this might be a very good reason why you should not depend on engines alone. The right move to go for is d8 queen, deliberately inviting the knight to fork. But we do need to wait for this because of this move. Can anyone see it? Did anyone work it out? Knight of six check. If the king moves to the corner after d8 queen, which comes in with an auto check, there is king g7. And when the knight continues with this check, king h7, this bishop check will end the game because the king has no more moves left. So let's hear it. There is another mate pattern here if you don't want to get your bishop involved when the king moves to h7. There is queen e7 check, and after king g6, there is this queen check, and when the king returns to where he was, h7, queen g7, and it's game over. Let's come back to see what happens if the king moves to g7. There is knight h5 check, and after king g6, only now Stockfish wakes up and begins to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Here we have bishop c2 check, and when this knight falls, only now you can promote to a queen. And of course, after this obvious fork, the entire idea is to drop the queen, but there is a reason for this. King e6 and knight takes check is all about this very sophisticated king move to f6, with a much better f5. And black can have all the pieces in the world, but what good are they if they're of no use? It's all about entrapment and how the black king is cornered. We know that king is stuck and he can't go anywhere. h4 is blocked and all other avenues are covered by the white king. And since white has a light colored bishop, if there is a way to somehow reposition all he needs is a check and black is done. So let's see if there is a way to do this. Or can black get to queen and win? e2 getting ready to promote to queen. Looks like it's game over, but there is more than meets the eye. After bishop e4, even if you're queen, when you relinquish control of f3, Bishop f3 is mate, and again, his mission accomplished, and this has to be the bishop from hell. After e2, bishop a4, with ideas of checkmating on e8, is not going to work, because when black promotes, e8 is covered, so this doesn't work. Okay, let's come back to this bishop move. And rather than promote to queen and lose, what if black promotes to the only piece that stops the mate? So let's bring on the board 
a brand new knight a less if black can be saved and now with f3 not being an option white has basically a single bishop that is capable of moving in any direction he likes but f7 and f3 are a no-go zone unless he wants to get captured and this is right after this bishop repositioning and now the only move that makes sense for black is to try and promote his next available pawn so what happens after this guy goes for it there is this monster of a response and this has nothing to do with the attack on the knight but look at the other direction the spot of interest here is this white square on e2 and it will be game over instantly so with this guy on c2 that is able to save the mate on e2 this is the way to save him from that mate and how often do you get to see two promotions being forced into knights bishop takes looks tempting but it's not going to work because we're not paying attention to what is important but if you go for this move how do you stop the bishop from gaining access to e8 knight c7 looks like just in time as he stops the bishop from sneaking into e8 but after the bishop retreats to a4 the new target is d1 and it appears four knights that are all posted on dark squares also imply they can only reposition to white squares and even none of the knights are able to fend against this very menacing bishop now i think i called in the bishop from hell but i can safely rename him to be the most dangerous bishop of all time after knight f3 what happens when the bishop lands up into this spot the problem black has is that with so many pieces on the board there is absolutely nothing that can come to the knight's rescue and the very best black has is to postpone that mate there is this knight move but after he's captured choose your next move it doesn't matter what you go for let's go for this move after bishop takes there is that golden mate and what a puzzle this was the only thing white had or has is this bishop he repositioned to all sides of the board his journey started from c2 he then moved to e4 then to d5 where did he go next it was here to c4 then to b5 then a4 and after d1 the knight was eliminated on e2 and right after c4 we get to see this magnificent mate when the knight came off on f3 and what a long run this bishop had to do leading to this near impossible ending and if tar was the only person who was capable of solving this puzzle you can only imagine how strong a player he was tau ended sixth in brussels but what if i told you he was very unfit to play he had all sorts of problems but his health deteriorated so much he died in 1992 at the age of 55 and who on earth dies at that age anyhow this is how white wins this game or study if you like a study that was solved by a single person and is very strange that our engines of today cannot solve this problem okay one puzzle out of the way and millions of others to follow there is a lesson today stuff but can you figure it out it is all about chess engines and how important it is not to heavily rely on them engines are extremely strong with certain positions and there are different engines that do different things some are really good with open positions and some are really strong with closed positions try this puzzle on your own hardware and software and let me know how you do and what these engines suggest some are able to find that knight of six check which is the most important move to find and yet none of them can solve it i hope you enjoyed in the meantime so until next time this was your chess puzzler